The anime begins 30 years earlier in the Pacific Ocean, where a new continent with new plants and living beings appeared, which was called Magmal. Due to the interest it generated in people to inspect it, they sent a large army to the new continent. That's where we can see a group led by a young man with white hair, who realized that they are being stalked by one of the creatures of those lands. So, to test his new techniques and become the king of this new era, the boy attacks the monster. Later, a robot accompanied by another strange boy, who wears a kind of uniform. They verify that this group has been completely annihilated when they see each of its members dead on the ground. After these years, it is explained that there are people who know Magmal like the back of their hand. And here we are introduced to the young man in uniform who is the protagonist of this story, who is an angler named Inyo. Back in a coastal town in Japan, we see a blonde boy, who looks quite sick, approaching an alley and going down some stairs. Meanwhile, in his room, Inyo is lying in bed until he is interrupted by a girl approximately his age, who is his apprentice. She insists that he get up, telling him that the day is sunny and very beautiful. After Inyo tells her that more people die on sunny days than on rainy days, she leaves. Returning to the boy, we see that he has reached a door with a sign at the top indicating that this is where Inyo lives. So he decides to ring the bell and is answered by the girl. He tries to ask her a favor, however, due to how weak he is from his illness, he faints at his door. A while later, when he finally wakes up, he notices that Inyo is in front of him. The boy apologizes for what happened and, after introducing himself as Chris, asks for his service in a job to save his brother in exchange for the money he has. But Inyo refuses because it is not enough money for such a risky mission. The young man explains that he has had an illness since he was little and that he will not live long, so when he is no longer here, he will ask him to send him the insurance money as compensation. Inyo, after sharing glances with his apprentice, who looks at him with very sad eyes. He accepts the mission and asks him to tell him everything in detail. Chris tells them that his parents and older brother traveled to Magmal to try to save him, as they were looking for something called Epona's Tear. So, after saying goodbye, his brother promises him that one day they will visit the new continent together, and they finally leave. Later, there is a knock on the door of the apartment where Chris lived. Behind this, he could see his brother full of wounds, bloody and crying, blaming himself for the death of their parents. The days passed, and the boy could see how his brother did not stop training and studying until one day he managed to get a class of license. After achieving this, he recruited a group to return to the new continent, promising him again that this time he would get the tear of Epona and then they will go to Magmal together. However, this time, Chris could see a serious look in his brother's eyes as he walked away to accomplish his mission. Back in the present, Inyo offers him to quickly go to his brother's rescue because the tier of Epona has a very high price. After boarding a helicopter, they head towards the new continent. While explaining that Magmal rejects all things from the outside and there are a great number of dangers, the apprentice heads towards a kind of control room. Once they reach the large continental island, they decide to take a mount, which is an animal trained to travel through those lands and Inyo continues telling him that the biggest murders in the world happen there, so he must be very careful. He explains that in order to enter there, they need a license. However, he is an angler, which is a person whose mission is to investigate and rescue everything that is related to Magmal. Once they reach a large cliff, Inyo says that to continue advancing safely they will have to use the drone. After this, their mount quickly flees the area, but this does not surprise them. From there, they must continue walking. Back with his apprentice, we see that she is looking at a large screen and is the one operating the drone. Among the extensive jungle, Chris tells Inyo that Epona's tear is a fruit that has the ability to increase body strength, even increasing physical abilities tenfold. After this, Inyo asks him if he knows the reason why it is called Epona's tear, explaining to him that it blooms on a mountain of corpses. Then, he asks him what he plans to do once he recovers from his illness, to which the boy answers that he would like to be a lactor, which surprises the boy a lot. Chris says that these are people who have fighting skills, and although people think they are a myth, he believes that they do exist. And having said this, he falls to his knees due to the exhaustion of his illness and asks if they could stop and rest. After hearing this, Inyo sends a message to his apprentice, who is revealed to be called Zero, and she, using her drone, gives him a strange fruit, which they tell us serves to improve mobility a little, avoiding fatigue. After advancing a little further, among the trees they see a man who has a large insect on his head and he is asking for help which greatly surprises Chris, and he asks Inyo if they should save him. But he tells him that it is too late, and, after throwing a stone near the man, huge centipedes emerge from the ground. 
after explaining that their hunting mechanism uses a live human to act as a decoy, as if it were a trap. He tells him that the most dangerous thing on the continent is not that. So they decide to continue advancing and we see that a small black ray comes out of Inyo's hand, slicing the centipedes into many pieces, letting the man fall with a smile on his face. After continuing on his way, a sensor which Inyo had in his pocket begins to beep, and due to his reaction, it means Chris's brother is still alive. Zero confirms that the direction they are going is the correct one, however, there is a problem, since there are some monstrous birds in the area. After hearing this, Inyo asks the boy to stay there and not move, since he is going to take care of a small problem. And after reaching the bird area, he once again summons a black lightning bolt from his hand, which makes a sword appear. With a great leap, he begins to kill the birds one by one. While he takes care of the creatures, Chris reunites with his brother, who came from picking fruit, and he is surprised to see his little brother there. Inyo, while continuing to destroy the birds with his skills, scares the rest of the flock, which flees. Back with Chris and his brother, they argue over the stupidity of going to such a dangerous place, and Kunyuris, which is what the older brother's name is, asks him to look at Epona's flower. So the little boy approaches the large plant, getting scared when he realizes that the place on which the flower had sprouted was a large mountain of corpses. Despite the enormous number of bones there, Kunyuris, deeply angry that there had not been enough bodies, he grabs a sharp bone from the ground, stabbing his little brother in the back. While he was fainting, his older brother explained that this was the reason why he had brought so many companions there, causing the plant to begin to react, opening and showing its fruit. After grabbing him, Inyo appears to protect Chris while asking Zero to give him first aid. Kunyuris, very angry, asks Inyo who he is, and he, ignoring him, he asks if he was the one who killed his parents and friends to get upon his tear. He answers that even if he got the fruit, his brother's illness would not be cured and, likewise, would die, so it would be better to use it on someone who will live longer. Inyo tells him that despite the little boy's situation, he decided to go rescue him even with his sick body, but the older brother scoffs, saying that he would have died anyway. Zero, despite having finished first aid, says that she is too late since he is very injured and, with his last breaths, Gris grabs Inyo's hand and asks him to please save his brother, since he believes that some strange creature is controlling him, just like they saw before. Finally, he tells him that it was very fun to get there with Inyo, and he dies, reuniting with his parents. Kunyuris is glad that the little boy is dead, but before finishing the sentence, he is sent flying when Inyo punches him in the face, revealing that the most dangerous thing about Magmal is suffering, the anger and evil that this continent gives to humans. After this powerful blow, Kunyuris gets up furious and eats Epona's fruit, thus increasing his muscle mass and strength, returning the punch to the young man, slamming him against a rock. However, it barely reacts and, approaching very quickly, he hits the older brother again, sending him flying through the air again and crashing into the ground. He, with the little strength he had left, raised his head to see a lactor above him, and remembering that his brother wanted to become one of those strange people, because the only way to save a person like that was to end his life, he finally breaks it by hitting it hard against the ground. Some time later, after having prepared a grave for him, he leaves and once at home he tells Zero that he is glad that she is with him, to which she replies that she feels the same way. The next day, in a kind of base located in a clearing in the Magmal Forest, we see two scientists talking that if the experiment turns out to be a success, modern medicine will develop a lot. While they talk about what they will do with their lives after finishing the investigation, an alarm goes off in the base, and after going to check what is happening on the cameras, they watch as they are being attacked by a large group of what appear to be bears with horns. After this, we are shown a memory of when Inyo was little. He falls to his knees out of exhaustion in front of a tall silhouette, which tells him that what he feels is not despair, and gives him her hand to help him get up. Just before touching his hand, this silhouette disappears, now seeing Inyo at his current age. At that moment, he reacts when Zero calls him and asks him if that's desperation, scaring him and finally making him wake up from the nightmare he was in. His first reaction is to look at the map on the wall showing the new continent. A few hours later, we see a blonde-haired woman looking at some directions written down on a piece of paper. She arrives at Inyo's house, and in a memory we see that she is the daughter of one of the scientists who told her that if something were to happen to her, she should look for Inyo. So, after that, she decides to ring the doorbell. Despite his highly developed physique, he receives a disapproving look from Zero at first. Hearing that the woman had a request about saving someone, the woman asks him to follow her. Upon seeing Inyo, at first he doubts a little that he is the angler they talk so much about. Despite that, 
he tells him that he has lost communication with his father's laboratory and says that they are head of the Department of Applied Biological Research at the Polar Star Corporation. This surprises Inyo a bit, since the North Star Corporation is a fairly large group and should have its own rescue team, so he should let her handle it. But the girl insists, telling him that his father told her that if something bad happened, she should go to that place to look for him specifically. This causes Inyo to ask if there is any reward for doing the job, since it is selfish to sacrifice someone's life to rescue it from another person. This makes the woman a little angry, as she thinks that Inyo's refusal to help her is cruel. But she finally begs him for his help, telling him that he is the only one she can count on and calls him Shuin, making the boy remember the mysterious figure. However, he denies help and says that he is not Shuin, which confuses the girl a little. The girl starts looking for something to identify in Yo. He, after getting up from his chair, says that, even if it's not the one he's looking for, he can take care of it. So they head towards the helicopter. On the way, they see a man named Owens, who does reveal that the girl's name is Amelia, and asks who is accompanying her. To which she answers that he is her younger brother and says that she will help them find their father. After this, they leave on their way to the ship. Inyo asks Amelia who her little brother is, and she tells him that she cannot take a stranger with her, so it would be best to pretend to be a family member. After that, they head towards the ship. While they communicate with Zero and ask him to recognize the destination place in advance, so Zero obeys and, also creating black rays between her hands, she makes the large screen appear again in front of her and sends her drone on its way. On the other hand, in Magmal's laboratory, we see an armed security guard shooting at the creatures. However, this is of no use and he ends up being killed. From inside, the scientists observe on cameras how their companions have been exterminated. On the plane on the way to their destination, they are analyzing what creatures they are going to face, which are a species of bear that usually feeds on hot minerals. However, if they get upset, their skin turns to steel and they get out of control. After this, the man who seems to guide the soldiers reports that there are around 30 specimens around the laboratory, and that it is an emergency situation, or at least it will be until they arrive. This causes the soldiers to start laughing, being interrupted by Inyo, which says that every year around 950,000 people disappear on the new continent, of which only a third could be alive and return. One of the soldiers congratulates him for having studied so much about those lands, but that they will be the ones who will ensure that more than a third of those there survive. Meanwhile, in the laboratory, cameras detect the arrival of the rescue team. From the ship, they line up their weapons and fire at the beasts, killing several of them. This surprises Inyo a bit, but the man leading the operation explains that those bullets are made of a metal they found in Magmal. However, Inyo interrupts him, saying that he is not referring to that, but rather that he is surprised that those creatures attacked the research laboratory, to which the man answers that it is simply because they are very violent, which makes Inyo extremely distrustful. Once above the laboratory, the soldiers parachute in and use their weapons to shoot the bears from the sky killing one after another. At that moment, Zero communicates with Inyo, warning him that something is heading there. So this one asks him to share the image. In it he can see a gigantic lizard much taller than the trees approaching there, attracted by the blood of the bears, which begins to bombard the area with gigantic rocks, throwing them with its tail in the direction of the ship. The man decides to retreat after losing the only missile capable of confronting that creature. Inyo, opening the door of the ship, grabs Amelia by the waist and jumps out of the gigantic plane, while those remaining on the ship flee the area. Once on the ground, they begin to investigate the huge projectile and ask the girl to fix it if she really wants to save her father. While he makes those black rays appear again between his hands, raising the colossal weapon and creating a structure around it. It is then that he asks the girl which of the two should die, pointing first at the reptile and then at the base where his father is, and then asked him why Magmal appeared in that world. He tells her it's because the world was so boring. Through the laboratory cameras, they see how the gigantic lizard stops and Inyo is now on top of it. He asks that the hostages be released, so that they can be saved. At that moment, the doctor is surprised. The chief recognizes the boy's hat and clothing on the creature, and thinks of Shuin. He then accepts the boy's request. While Amelia finishes the preparations for the missile, Inyo makes the creature follow him and, after positioning it at a specific point, he asks the girl to shoot. She obeys, but the monster seems to be going to avoid it. However, Inyo apologizes to the beast and creates a huge hand with which he pushes the reptile, causing the missile to pass through the monster, making it explode in a shower of blood. While the girl's father frees some bear cubs that were kept locked up, already on the ship, Inyo explains that the bears only wanted to free their cubs and that is why they attacked them. 
to which the man on the ship explains that when the offspring's blood is refined, they become the hardest metal in the world. After a short conversation, Inyo tells him that he is there because his daughter called him. A couple of hours later, on the news, they say that the ship they were traveling in crashed for an unknown cause. However, there were no deaths. After this, Emilia, together with Inyo, talk about how her father will never work on the new continent again. With his arrival, Inyo disappears. In the afternoon, the boy walks next to the beach while talking to Zero's drone, telling him that one day he will grow up. To which the cheerful girl answers that it will happen to him too. A few days later, Inyo and his apprentice were watching television. As soon as he tries to grab a pudding from the table, however, Zero takes it out of his hands with a small smack, telling him that the pudding is his. After this, they continue watching the large screen where they see an auction in which they are offering a very rare creature from Magmal, the Nanarabato, a bird with the abilities to eliminate any type of poison. While Inyo and Zero talk about this type of bird existing in Area 45 of the New Continent, since in that area there are a large number of poisonous creatures, the bets start directly with millionaire numbers and while they argue about the fact that there are people with a lot of money, Inyo manages to steal one of the puddings. Until finally, the bidding ends up selling the bird for a billion-esque, and Zero comments that with that money he could buy a pudding factory. At that moment the winners of the auction enter the room with the bird in their hands, and after sitting down to talk, the man explains how he earned all that money. The man, whose name is Daesum, explains that he worked very hard to get that pigeon and that he needs Inyo's help. Since he wants to find his friends in the 45th district, Inyo tells him to give up, since in that area, since there are so many dangerous creatures, possibly his friends are already dead, and reproaches him that they must have been very stupid to be there. The man, after hearing this, the client explains to them that they were immigrants and that 30 years have passed since the incident in Magmal. He also says that among those who lived there the unions were very strong, since they could not live unless they cooperated with each other. He and his friends Stuart and Stein were together for anything, using two insects there to fight each other as if it were a big playground for them. And after finishing the insect fight, Daesum proposes the idea of collecting many more insects and checking which of them is number one. Inyo, after talking to Zero about how this is a practice of bad taste, asks the man if his friends were poisoned at that time, to which he answers yes, and that only he was able to escape. Due to fear, he couldn't tell anyone anything and some time later the immigration plan failed, so they had to leave the new continent, thus losing contact with Stuart and Stein's relatives. And since then, he began to work very hard to earn a lot of money to buy that bird, since it could eliminate any poison. Inyo tries to make him understand that after so much time it is most likely that they are no longer alive, however, the man says he knows, however, he wants to make sure. And after offering him the amount of money he considers, Inyo accepts the job. Some additional conditions have changed, and after telling him that his clothes are not optimal for traveling in that area, he asks Zero to take care of the man's clothes. Once in Magmal, Daesum feels melancholy to be back in the lands where he grew up and talks to Inyo about how what he does by helping people is a good thing and that more people should do it. But he answers that if he doesn't get money, he won't help anyone. And anyone could do it, yet no one wants to. And the worst thing about this situation is that you can't always save everyone. At that moment, the apprentice's drone warns them that there are signs of a monster ahead. However, the sensor has not been able to detect its silhouette. They continue advancing until they reach an open area where everything seems very nice and calm, where there are even some beautiful flowers ahead. At that moment, Inyo stops the man and tries to grab the flowers, since they are very suspicious. Suddenly, vines emerge from the ground and try to attack him, but he, with his black rays, he creates some machine guns to defend himself and starts shooting repeatedly at the creature. A flying insect comes out of the smoke and tries to attack him, but Inyo dodges it. The moth continues flying and sprays a kind of thread on it that ties it. But Inyo creates giant metal hands that grab the thread and throw the insect into the air. Once again calmly, with the flowers in his hand, he feeds them to the dove, explaining to Daesum that those flowers are poisonous to humans, however, they are the favorite food of those birds. And he questions what is poison and what is medicine, asking if it is just a human convenience. After a while of continuing walking, they arrive at an area where Daesum finds a tree with a mark and remembers that it was he who carved it in his childhood to find his way back. So he starts running towards a clearing in the forest where there was a cave. And Inyo, when asked if that was the place where the tragedy occurred, sends the drone to investigate before they enter. That's when the man remembers how that incident happened, in which after putting a worm in, a scorpion and a bat inside a jar, and wait a little, when he opened it, his friends were poisoned by the vapors that came out of the vessel. 
and wrapped in fury, Daesim throws the container hard against the ground, breaking the many pieces, regretful of having fled after that happened. However, Inyo tells him that his friends are still alive, and from the darkness of the cave a giant scorpion begins to appear. But upon noticing this one, who had hair, the man quickly identified his friend Stuart, which, because it is now a monster, attacks him mercilessly, but they manage to avoid it with luck. The man wants to reason with the creature, trying to make him remember that he is his childhood friend. Suddenly, a large bat enters the cave attacking the scorpion, and after seeing that he had his friend's glasses, he also recognizes him as Stein, and he is glad that he is also alive, however, he does not seem to recognize him and attacks him, so Inyo throws the man to the ground to avoid him. At that moment, Daesim thinks that if he used the bird to cure its poison, he could turn them back into humans. So they run towards the cage while the two creatures fight each other. And even though Inyo sees no other option but to attack them, the man avoids it, ending up between the two creatures. Looking into their eyes, he begins to cry, very regretful of the decision he made to run away when he was little. And he realizes that both monsters understand what he says. And he feels happy to be recognized. So Daesim asks Inyo, so with that bird the poison of both will disappear. To which he answers yes, however, his friends will die, since due to their transformation, they now need that poison to live, and if they made it disappear, they would end up dying, since they could not become human again. After that, the two enormous beasts head towards a place with the intention of both of them following them and leaving the cave they reach the place where the mark was on the tree, as a sign that they really remember him and the good times they had as children. After that, they decide to return to the cave, saying goodbye to them. Inyo asks him if he is sure he doesn't want to finish them off, since sometimes death is a kindness and could make them stop suffering. However, the man says that it is not necessary to take a life since it is selfish, and as he says this, he releases the dove, and he says that even though they now have a different body, they are still Stuart and Stein and even though they have changed, he too changed since that day. Back in the country, Inyo and Zero are watching a lecture by Daesim, in which he says that all profits from Magmal's environmentally protected sales will be used for those people who lost relatives on the new continent and also that he will build a pudding factory. And when one of the reporters asks him why specifically pudding, he answers that it is an additional condition. So Inyo, happy about this, he grabs one of the containers, but his apprentice quickly steals it from his hands, telling him that he will only be able to eat one pudding every 20 days. And this bothers Inyo a little, since he thinks that she is very stingy. The next day, these two go to the market and the girl sees something that she thinks is tasty, and she would like to try. But Inyo tells her that she should only try half and only lets him spend 30 esque. To which she gets a little upset because she thinks he is very stingy. And when he goes to buy it, the seller tells her that one is worth 40 esque, but he only gives him 30. The man, seeing this, tells him that it is not enough and that this is a business, he cannot afford to lower the price to each person who asks for it. But she, without understanding him too much, tells him that if he can get the next buyer to pay him 10 esque more, there should be no problem, since he would earn the same. The salesman laughs, as he likes the girl's attitude, so just this once he will sell her a cheaper one. Inyo sees that it looks pretty good, so he decides to buy one too, but when he goes to ask the seller for one, it tells him that its price is now 50-esque, and this makes Inyo a little angry. After this, they hear a lot of people making a fuss and wonder what is going on. So as they get closer, they see that they are talking about a miraculous person called Verena Stellaria, which is a snow-white woman with blonde hair who managed to enter Magmal eight times to have adventures, and she has a serious announcement to make today. This goes on to say that even today the world is surrounded by wars and that children who lost their parents continue to cry, so she wants to save as many children as possible, so she will return to the new continent again. And after such news, everyone starts chanting his name. However, Zero notices that Inyo is observing the woman with a cold and serious look, to which he replies that she is not a miraculous person and nicknames her Bloody Mary. Later, back at the base, Zero searches for information about this Verena and finds that to help an orphanage with business difficulties, she went to Magmal alone, and, overcoming many dangers, she brought home many loots to donate all her earnings to the orphanage, without taking into account her own risk. After reading this, the girl thinks that she is a good person, however, she remembers her teacher's words without knowing why he said that to her. So a while later, using her drone, she comes to inspect the orphanage and sees all the children happy playing and having fun, except for a girl who is in front of some flowers crying. And this surprises Zero greatly, since she remembers her past in which she was all bruised and with her clothes torn. After this, continue observing through the drone, 
she sees that Verena approaches the little girl to ask what's wrong and she answers that her friend Momo has disappeared. So the woman tells her that they will look for him together and this makes the girl happy, who gives her a big hug. Zero continues observing with her drone hidden in the undergrowth until she notices that the woman is looking in her direction. But it seems that he doesn't get to see her, as she grabs the little girl's hand and they head inside the orphanage. After this, the girl deactivates her abilities, making the drone controller and the TV disappear, and at that moment Inyo enters the room, who grabbed a book and, upon sitting at the PC, you can see that a tab was open where there was information about Verena. After this, a memory comes to mind in which, when he was little with a mysterious boy, they heard a woman scream. From above the ravine, they can see that Verena is being attacked by a monster. So the mysterious young man with white hair warns Inyo that this creature is quite dangerous and asks him to stay there. After jumping and confronting her, we see that she also has materialization powers similar to those of Inyo, and, creating a large book, crush and beat the monster until it is unconscious. At that moment, Inyo comes down from the cliff to meet his teacher and this mysterious man, after warning her that this place is dangerous for a woman to be alone, recommends that she leave. But she answers that she must be there for the greater good, so the man does not question it and begins to leave. Inyo shares glances with Verena, blushing, and then runs off after his master. That same night, while the mysterious white-haired boy was sleeping, Inyo decides to go look for the woman because he is calm when thinking that she could be in danger. He takes the opportunity to leave and go look for her. After a while of walking through the jungle, he finally reaches the place where the woman is, but upon seeing what she is doing he would be disturbed. He has gone back to the present while still looking at the PC screen, thinking that this woman is a mistake from the devil. That same afternoon, a group of people come to his base asking him to help Verena, since without her the children will be lost. But Inyo, after listening to their pleas, refuses and everyone begins to reproach him and look at him with a very bad face, to which he continues to pester them, telling them that if she is a miraculous person or a saint, she should be able to go alone and that nothing will happen to her. But he continues with his mockery, telling him that since he is not, anything could happen to him, and this angers the crowd even more who keep telling him angrily that he should help her for the sake of the little ones. To which, after hearing this, Inyo asks if any of those who are there criticizing him dared to accompany her, and that makes there be a great silence in the room. To which a man answers that he cannot contact any of the companions the woman had, and Inyo says that according to the stories they tell about her, she usually goes alone, so it's a farce. But they answer that those who accompanied her did so of their own free will. Zero interrupts the conversation saying that she really believes that Verena is a good woman, and that she helps children, and after sharing a look with Inyo, he once again denies help on his part. So his apprentice, somewhat upset, makes the decision to help her herself. So everyone leaves and she goes to her room, where she starts controlling the drone, and reluctantly, Inyo decides to get on his helicopter and go in search of the woman. Once the drone is activated, he discovers that all of Verena's companions are either very badly injured or dead because a creature from the new continent attacked them. And Inyo, upon arriving, finds a large herd of these monsters. So, seeing that they are a large number and playing at a disadvantage, he decides to use his powers by creating crossbows and making a rain of arrows that eliminates many of them. Until a powerful roar catches his attention and as he directs his gaze there, he sees that it is the same species of creature that his master faced the first time they met the woman, and this causes Inyo to have a memory about his teacher. In this they show us how, after seeing what disturbed Inyo, he asks his teacher why he saved her if she is someone bad, to which her teacher answers that she simply had problems when she appeared and that's why he saved her, since whether someone is good or bad or not is up to him, and simply if he needs to be saved, he will help him. So Inyo believes that he cannot think the same, but his teacher tells him that he will understand when the time comes. Back in the present, the creature attacks Inyo by launching a kind of laser through its mouth, but he manages to dodge it, a fact that causes the trees hit by the attack to catch fire. After observing that the monster is really strong, Inyo creates an axe with which to stop the projectiles that the beast throws at him, and it is revealed to us that his teacher was the mysterious Shuen. We are told this when Inyo begins to think that he does not believe that his teacher was wrong in his way of acting. However, I couldn't think the same as him. And finally he makes a powerful blow against the creature's head, it gets scared and runs away. And realizing that everything around him is on fire, he uses the axe to cut all the logs, thus preventing the fire from spreading. While realizing that he has not yet reached the level of his master. Meanwhile, Zero continues searching for the woman until he finally finds her, but sees a scene that disturbs her. 
and at that moment, Inyo arrives at the same area where the drone is, observing how Verena emerges from the corpse of one of the creatures, which has been removing the monster's organs and is soaked in blood. He says that the internal organs of that monster are traded at a high price, and that if he sells them he could help many children. Inyo informs her that many of those who accompanied her died, to which she tries to justify herself by saying that they accompanied her of their own free will, to then continue removing organs from the beast. After a few seconds, they begin to be surrounded by more creatures of the same species and the woman, upon seeing the enormous number of these, becomes excited, since he wonders how many children he could save by selling the remains of all those monsters, and decides to run to which Inyo tries to stop her. But Zero, seeing the woman's crazy look, she recommends Inyo leave due to the enormous number of beasts, to which he pays attention and they leave, making way for the creatures to devour their defeated companion. Days later, we learn that Verena died in Magmal. However, her devotees believe that she is not dead, but has now become a goddess. Upon hearing this, the girl the woman helped is very sad and crying until Zero's drone hits Momo, which turned out to be a stuffed animal very loved by the little girl. Later, while walking through the market, Inyo and his apprentice have a small conversation about the concept of good and evil, since it is something originally created by humans. Upon arriving at the same food stand as the last time, this time it is Inyo who is invited, and after this, they decide to enjoy their food together while they continue walking. After the appearance of Magmal, the dream of a man inspired by the stories of a pirate, a hunter, a gourmet and a manga editor was born. Since, due to the countless dangers that existed in the new continent, many were unable to return. He, after thinking that they were idiots, also tried to become someone who would reach those mysterious lands. However, in some unknown way, he ended up trapped and buried up to his waist in the middle of nowhere, beginning to panic when he noticed that the ground was shaking around him because a large creature was approaching little by little. The man tried to turn around to see what it was, even though he couldn't. And when he finally did it, it was too late, because the gigantic creature was already practically on top of him. This was a colossal carnivorous turtle, which, because it was very hungry, began to drool on the man. So he began to struggle trying to escape from his earthen trap so as not to be devoured, until he finally urinated himself from fright. After that, he realized that possibly his life had just come to an end, so he began to remember how he got to that point. Here we are told that the man, whose name is Dendon, worked in a store in the city. One day he started reading that there was a lot of money to be made on the new continent, so he was seriously thinking about whether he should move there. At that moment, Inyo and his apprentice enter the store posing as father and daughter, which surprises the man. And he tells us that since he meets Inyo he is about to suffer a heart attack, since he always manages to deceive him and tease him. Zero notices a can of fish and says it's something very expensive, asking if it's splurge day. However, Inyo answers that no, but since he goes to that store many times, the owner is his best friend, so he can have a discount. And because of the lie, Dendon gets upset, since from the first time he saw him, whenever he appears, he thinks he is going to die. That's when he tells us that the first time Inyo entered the store, he asked the price of a flashbang grenade. And when the man answered that it was 4,100-esque, Inyo only gave him a thousand and began to wonder if he was crazy, to see that he then offered only 800. So he asks Inyo to stop joking, to which he replies that he should not pay its original price, since the grenade was already in bad condition. This surprises the seller, since that is something impossible. However, Inyo continues explaining that even if he takes out the ring it will explode, and using his powers, he makes it explode. After that it became a rumor and the clients decreased. However, Inyo continued going to the store again and again trying to scam the seller in any way, from paying with fake handmade bills to simulating accidents and dangers inside the store. Not to mention many other absurd reasons, just to get discounts when buying products there. But this time, Dendon was prepared as he had reinforced the checkout shelf, checked all the products, and even left the floor spotless. After that, he realized that Inyo always bought equipment, even thinking he was some kind of military maniac until they finally leave his basket with the products on the counter and ask him the price, to which the man tells them that it is 60,000-esque. Worried about the boy's reaction, and trying to reassure himself, he remembers that he had even put up security cameras to prevent any of his tricks. And just when he was expecting the trap, Inyo without any problem tells him that he will pay with a card, explaining that today is a day to spend, so he is not worried about the discount as it always helps him well. 
and this leaves the seller in shock, who thinks maybe he was too suspicious. Inyo and his apprentice ask him to send the products home and prepare to leave the store, and while Denden watches them walk away, he notices that a wooden plank begins to fall, although it was actually held by the girl's drone, which, with a fake blood button, touches his head to simulate an accident. And after a small scene of father and daughter saying goodbye due to her death, the seller doesn't know what to do, to which Inyo demands a discount. That same afternoon, once the discount was over, he saw how little by little Inyo left with his supposed daughter in his arms, until she turns around looking at the seller and smiles mockingly, making him realize that he has been fooled again. And because of that, realizing that this could possibly be the end of his business, he finally decides to travel to Magmal to start over, since he believes that it is better to die on the new continent than to have to continue putting up with Inyo. So he will go to fulfill his dream of being a millionaire, and he starts laughing loudly. The next day he closes the store and rides on top of a large motorcycle-like vehicle, and after doubting a little whether he could really get there with that vehicle, he thinks that he will manage later, until he is surprised to realize that both Inyo and Zero also got into the vehicle, and ask him. Since they got into the vehicle, let him take them home. A little reluctantly he agrees to take them, until they reach a huge meadow full of windmills, and that's when Denden really starts to doubt if it's the right path. However, they answer yes and to continue forward, accompanied by the complaint that they are going too slow, and after making fun of this problem a little, they come to a red light and stop. The determined salesman tells them that when he was young he was a very fast driver, and that he will give them a demonstration. After hearing this, they doubt that this is true, so the man prepares by keeping his hand on the accelerator. And just before it turns green, Inyo cuts the brakes, and both he and his apprentice get out of the vehicle without Denden noticing. So when the traffic light turns green, the vehicle shoots forward at great speed, something that makes the seller proud. However, he realizes that his companions are no longer there. And when he reach another traffic light when he try to stop, he realizes that the brakes don't work. It is at this moment that a huge truck passes him, and with a lot of luck and a swerve of the steering wheel he manages to avoid it, to then receive the driver's reprimand. And after feeling relieved that he was able to survive, it is then that he realizes that he is on a ravine from which he slips and falls into the sea where he almost drowned, if it hadn't been for Inyo throwing him afloat. And when the man feels that the sea is calling him and that with his motorcycle he would never have been able to reach the new continent, so think that the best option will be to sail the seas. Some time later, with the savings of 30 years, he bought a boat, and he feels proud of what he has achieved. But that pride is suddenly cut short when he realizes that, once again, Inyo and his supposed daughter are on board. They notice that he has many supplies and weapons in boxes, and ask him if he is some kind of criminal fleeing the country, to which Denden reproaches him, since they are the ones who only buy weapons. Behind this, Inyo shows him his power, creating a grenade in his hand, and explains that his ability works as a kind of scanner, analyzing the structure, and manipulating materials to create something that he has previously studied. So if he were left without the weapons that he provides in his store, he would not be able to analyze a greater variety of weapons. Therefore, he would be in trouble. And after this he gives him the grenade, but he realizes that they took the ring off, so he quickly throws it with bad aim so that it falls into the ship. So, not knowing what to do directly to save his life, he jumps into the water and his boat explodes, thus losing 30 years savings. And as he floats on the water and looks at the sky, he realizes that he still has one last chance, so it will travel through the air. Some time later he decides to go hang gliding, because he no longer has enough money, not even to go by plane. At first he doubts whether he could get there with hang gliding, but because there is no turning back and he doesn't plan to give up, he starts running, until it jumps and takes flight. But once many meters high, he realizes that he does not know in which direction Magmal is, and he decides to see it on the map, but realizes that he can't let go right now to check it out. Suddenly Inyo appears flying next to him with Zero's drone. And after telling him, he tells her that it seems he can't get up completely, so he creates a huge fan that makes Denden fly very high, which loses stability and plummets, managing to save itself at the last second. However, he loses control again and falls into a truck carrying pigs. And we see that the drivers talk about how it is the first time they will travel to Magmal to take those little pigs that they will use as food. And this is how Denden, surrounded by sparrows, achieved his dream of traveling to the new continent. Again we return to the beginning, where he was buried up to his waist with the enormous turtle behind him, which was waiting for him to tell his story to eat him. And just before he devoured him, Inyo appears saving his life, a fact that makes him very happy and happy, since he sees that he really considers him his friend, 
and he tells him that he will go shopping again more times. Several days later, we see Inyo looking at a large screen with a cat on it, while remembering his childhood with Shuin in a large wooden house on an old tree, while Zero, excited, continues looking at the screen where there is a program about kittens, and she thinks they are adorable, very happy seeing each of the things they do. Finally, she comes to the conclusion that she would like to adopt a kitten and asks Inyo if they could have one, to which he refuses. And when she asks him why, he tells her that he doesn't want a cat because he hates them. This greatly surprises the girl, who, after thinking about how adorable they are, believes that it is impossible to hate cats unless you are a bad person. And he even says that people cure themselves of work anxiety by watching kitten videos on the internet. To which he explains that it is a conspiracy in which there is an evil power infiltrated in the cat videos, and in reality they are robbing them of their fighting instinct so that they work like horses. However, she tells him that it is not good to lie and, grabbing his cap, points out the kitten badges it has, saying that they are cats, or at least they look like ones. However, Inyo, after explaining that they are not cats, tells her that he does not like having pets, and this leaves Zero very serious, who, after continuing to observe the badges on his cap, asks him if they are something precious to him, to which he continues remembering his past with his teacher. After a while, Inyo asks Shuin why he is silent and what he has been thinking about for a while, to which he answers that in his family. Inyo, surprised that he has a family, asks him if he knows where they are or what they do, to which their master answers no, since they are no longer in this world because he could not protect them. Inyo, somewhat surprised, asks him if he was not strong enough, but Shuin answers that he is stronger than anyone. So his apprentice asks him if it's because he didn't try hard enough, to which he responds again by telling him that he is probably the person who tries the hardest of all. So, to finish, Inyo asks him why they died then, to which Shuin ends up saying that it is because he is a bigger idiot than anyone else and sincerely asks his student to become a wise person. After this, we see that a few days later, Inyo is facing a monster under the supervision of his teacher, who, after a few seconds, he takes responsibility and says that he will take care of it himself, taking a huge leap towards the beast and finishing it off. That night, the somewhat angry Inyo reproaches him that he could defeat him without his intervention, and shows him how much he has improved, creating a knife with his power. However, Shuin answers that it was still too early and leaves there, which bothers Inyo a little. The next morning, he walks alone through the jungle, still angry that his teacher always treats him like a child, until upon reaching an area he is surprised to see many corpses of adventurers lying on the ground, recognizing them by the insignia they wear on their chests as monster hunters. After this, a small sound catches his attention, and when he goes to find out what it is, he finds a small cat-like creature, which seems a little scared. So he tries to calm him down, and finally, seeing that the boy had no bad intentions, the little animal approaches him. There we see that Shuin is observing him from above a tree. Back at home, Inyo thinks about what name he should give him, until he decides on the name Toto, his new pet. Happy to have a name, he lies down on his legs peacefully to sleep. At that moment, his teacher arrives and tells him that his new little friend seems to like him, so Inyo asks him if they can keep him, and after a few seconds of thinking, Shuin finally says yes. As night falls, Inyo decides to carve a badge in the shape of a cat. However, in the process he cuts himself with the knife, bleeding. So after seeing this, his teacher tells him that he will be in charge of finishing the badge. But suddenly, seeing that the small animal was coming to smell the blood on the ground, it puts one foot in front cutting off the path, and after a series of deep glances, he continues with his work. A while later, with the badges finished, he hands them to his student, and he hangs one of them around his little pet's neck. Then without waiting for it, his teacher puts a cap on him, which has the other insignia he made embroidered on it, telling him that it was a gift for him in exchange for keeping one of the badges, thus spending the night all together in calm. Back in the present, now knowing the origin story of those badges, Zero understands that they have become precious to him as his teacher made them. And after that, he asks what happened to Toto. He tells him that the days went by and, even though the creature did not act like a normal pet, it never left in Yo, and accompanied him everywhere. Even once when they were trying to cross a small river, because Toto was afraid of water, Inyo tried to carry it in his arms, but he slipped and the first thing the pet did was grab a stick with the intention of helping him. And when it saw that he was well, it was happy, jumping into his arms. Little by little, Inyo trained it to do tricks like chasing the stick, although sometimes he ended up in trouble. Becoming great friends, all of this watched by his teacher, who kept his eye on him. Until one day, walking through the jungle, Inyo heard cries for help from a badly injured man who had stepped on a bear trap, thus becoming trapped. 
That's when we see that everyone is happy to see blood and Inyo asks the man how it all happened. To which he answers that he doesn't know, he was simply walking, and, since he didn't see him, he ended up stepping on him. Inyo asks him if it really wasn't him, explaining that Magmal's creatures were not stupid enough to get caught in a trap. So, before helping the man, make sure he is not trying to make money trafficking the fauna of the new continent. And when checking his bag, he finds a precious bird which was selling very expensive on the black market. So he decides to free him. This greatly angers the man, who pulls out a gun and, after threatening to shoot him if he doesn't let go, Toto begins to lick the man's wound, while Inyo asks him who will take the bait if he kills him. And after continuing to talk a little, they both realize that something is happening to the little animal, since it begins to get much bigger until it transforms into a huge monster witch, with one blow of its claws, kills the man. Due to having grown so much in size, the necklace he was wearing broke, falling to the ground. After hearing this part of the story, Zero is very surprised by it and asks Inyo what happened next, to which he explained that he had to kill him, leaving the girl very disturbed. While he continues telling that before that, the monster began to devour the man's corpse and, after realizing that Inyo was there, he attacked him mercilessly, with the luck that his teacher rescued him. Shuen begins to explain that if he drinks human blood, these types of creatures transform. So, very worried, Inyo asks him if there is any way to return him to normal, but he tells him no and teaches him a hard lesson that he must learn, reminding him that the place they are in is not an ordinary place, it is Magmal. And after this, creating a sword, he prepares to kill the monster. However, he is interrupted by Inyo, who asks him to please let him do it. And his teacher, after asking him if he can, is attacked by Toto. After this, Inyo makes a sword appear, which he wields, and that is where a fight begins between his pet and him, with the beast attacking first. Inyo dodges and manages to attack him, however, when he hits him on the horns, the sword bounces and flies into the air, giving the beast time to counterattack, hitting the boy and throwing him to the ground. And as he watches him approach little by little, he remembers all the moments he spent with him and when he saw that he attacked him, generating a sword again with his power. He reacts and for a second he sees that the creature hesitates whether to accept the blow. So, with a quick movement, Inyo cuts it. Realizing that the beast was looking at his collar on the ground and regretting having attacked his pet, he dies. A few hours later, after having buried the enormous corpse, his teacher approaches him, telling him that he acted well, giving him the badge that Toto had on his necklace and reminding him that it wasn't his fault. Once the story is over, both Inyo and his apprentice remain silent for a few seconds, until he breaks the silence by telling her that that was the first time he killed a monster, since in the new continent if you don't kill, they kill you. After this, he apologizes to Zero and asks if she could wait a little longer to have pets. The girl, a little sad about the story, is about to speak when suddenly, a customer rings the bell, and after doubting a little whether he should open at that moment, Inyo asks her to act normally. A few minutes later, the customer turned out to be a girl who was crying saying that Ruka, her pet, had disappeared. The little girl shows a drawing of a cat, and this moves Inyo, who reassures the girl by telling her that they will find her cat. This makes the little girl happy, however, she corrects him by telling him that Ruka is a dog. And seeing his master's positive attitude despite having gone through all that, Zero smiles, saying that clearly no matter how you look at him, he is a dog. Some time later, flying over Magmal, Emilia and Owens arrive at an area of the continent called the Magic Octagon, a place where many planes have fallen. However, the man says that traveling on a ship as advanced as that would be impossible for them to shoot down, since it is the largest and strongest armed helicopter in the world. Owens really thinks like this, as the vehicle is made from Magmal's strongest minerals and thinks that due to the reports, the reasons for concern are obvious. However, if they can discover why that area is so dangerous for ships, it will be beneficial for their company. They go deeper and deeper into this octagon and from the water, some frog-like creatures watch the large vehicle approach. However, these creatures begin to throw large rocks at the ship, using their long, powerful tongues as catapults. The ship's soldiers react by using their cannons and machine guns to break the projectiles thrown at them. However, there comes a time when they begin to be too much to be able to react, to have until they lose control of the engines. At that moment, something hits the helicopter, and through the cameras, Emilia sees how a long arm coming from a human silhouette has managed to grab the ship and is pulling it towards the ground with the intention of crashing it, which it succeeds in doing. 
After this, the frogs begin to croak and we are shown a kind of short humanoid smiling and with a somewhat disturbing face. Meanwhile, in the city, Dr. Chester heads to Inyo's base, where he and Zero talk about the marshmallows that the girl likes so much, saying that from now on they will have this meal for breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner, since Zero bought it because it was sold at a low price and in large quantities since they had no money for anything else. At that moment, the doctor knocks on the door and tells them that their daughter disappeared on the new continent. This makes Inyo react with curiosity, since the last time they saw each other, the case was the other way around, and Chester shows them the place where his daughter was going and asks for their help again, explaining that they were attacked by an unknown force, even while on the ship. Upon hearing this, Inyo gives in an exchange for the reward being double that of the last time. After hearing these words, the doctor comments that Inyo looks a lot like his mother Shuin, and after downplaying the importance of the situation, Inyo reconsiders his decision and demands triple the payment. And after a while of thinking about it, knowing that his daughter's life is at stake, he accepts, also taking the opportunity to make him eat a large amount of marshmallows to quickly use up his reserves. Meanwhile, at the place where the ship crashed, Emilia decides to get out of the vehicle, even though Owens asks him to stop, as it can be dangerous. However, the woman tells him that if that were the case, whatever would have shot down the ship would have already attacked, so it must have some other objective. And even though the man still thinks it's not a good idea, the girl runs away until she reaches an area where she sees a lot of crashed planes and ships. That's when she sees the same silhouette that she saw on the cameras, but it quickly teleports to a branch behind her. Inyo, along with Chester, say goodbye to Zero and ask her to go ahead with the drone, so she obeys, but not before giving them some marshmallows to eat for the road, although they prefer to avoid it. A while later, Emilia returns to Owens, who was worried, and he tells her that the rescue team will arrive soon. On his way to the mainland, the doctor is happy when he is notified with this same information. However, Inyo says it's a shame. These words surprise Chester until the boy explains that once they get there he will understand. At that moment, the air fleet arrives at the area, and just as happened with the great ship, they begin to be stoned by the frogs, Aided by the small humanoid creature, which is throwing its arms, makes several of the helicopters collide with each other, knocking them down one after another, until they are all destroyed without much effort, which surprises both Owens and Emilia. Still on the way, Inyo asks Zero about the situation, and she confirms that what he had previously told her was true and that it is Aaron. Chester, surprised, asks about that name and Inyo tells her to look through the cameras. When doing so, a small humanoid silhouette is seen in the distance, which looks towards the helicopter. Meanwhile, the frogs approach the great down ship, to which a worried Owens asks the soldiers to enter battle, since he also knows of Aaron's existence, which explains that he is a native person of that continent. She, after remembering her encounter with the small creature, runs out there. Once arriving at the destination area, Inyo and Chester talk about the native and have a conversation about whether they already knew of his existence. At that moment, Zero confirms the location of the large ship and also notifies that Emilia is still alive upon seeing her running through the trees. So Inyo tells the girl's father while she tries to stop the soldiers from attacking Aaron, since he doesn't like weapons. However, the soldiers pay no attention to him and as soon as they see the creature approaching, they open fire on it. It reacts by dodging the attacks with great speed, lengthening its limbs and disarming the soldiers with them, until two of them fire a missile launcher that hits the native. Once the cloud of dust from the explosion has disappeared, we see that the creature is still intact and disarms the rest of the guards, so they retreat, while Inyo's helicopter appears in the sky, which catches Eren's attention, and Zero reports that they are in his sights, to which Inyo asks Chester if he has any weapons on him to which the man answers that he obviously has one due to the dangers of the area. At that moment, the native stretches one of his arms in the direction of the vehicle, and Inyo jumps next to the doctor before it hits, destroying the helicopter. The drone, luckily, manages to grab them in the air, and begins to bring them closer to the area where Amelia is, which tells that the Aarons are native creatures of Magmal with great power of nature, and 30 more specimens have already been found on the continent. However, they all have two things in common, which are having a relatively similar appearance to humans and having the same or higher intelligence than humanity. Finally, father and daughter are reunited as the small humanoid approaches. The woman explains to the doctor that Aaron is not bad, he just doesn't like weapons, to which he replies that he already knows and says that it is better for Inyo to take care of it. 
Little by little he approaches the native, who attacks him quickly. Inyo, seeing it as a game, accepts the challenge and both begin to fight, dodging and throwing blows and projectiles at each other incessantly, until finally Inyo, after putting himself in an advantageous position, he ends the fight by defeating the Aaron with one last attack. Emilia approaches the area, reproaching him that the creature was good and it was not necessary to kill it, to which he answers that he has not done such a thing and we can see that the native was defeated and buried by a large mountain of marshmallows. The little creature, once he manages to come out with a pair of these, is delighted with their taste, so he, along with his frogs, begin to eat, thus surprising everyone around him and Zero. He decides to do the same. Finally Inyo tells the native that they are not enemies and he answers that the only thing they want is to live in peace, so the boy promises not to come near that area again. Chester apologizes to Inyo again for the problems and, as this is the second time they need his help, he says that he would like to do something to thank him. And Inyo asks for a new helicopter and anything other than marshmallows, upon hearing this. Due to the enormous taste that the toads developed for it, they begin to croak, and Zero says that he can understand them. After this, the mission ends with a happy result for everyone. Days later, Inyo and Zero's drone are collecting food in Magmal. Until the apprentice grabs a jellyfish mushroom, the boy explains that it is highly deadly if eaten, to which she gets scared and drops it. Next, he lies down on the grass and the girl reproaches him, telling him that they are in that situation because of her for wasting money. So, when he gets up again, he sees a bright light deep in the forest and decides to go check it out. Upon reaching the area, he sees how a small, reduced village with bros is in front of him, making Zero think it's creepy, and there might be ghosts, so she is going to investigate with her drone. At that moment, from among the undergrowth, a man with a rifle points at Inyo. A while later, we see that he is gagged in what looks like a cafeteria, while the man, whose name is Tabu, refills some boxes with ammunition. At that moment, Inyo asks him if he lives alone, but gets no answer. So, observing that the place where he was previously was a cafeteria, he asks the man for a coffee. Again, no response. After a few seconds of silence, Tabu asks him what he is doing there, to which the boy answers that he only went to look for food and adds that he did not want to harm him or interfere in his life. However, the hunter points his rifle at him again, and after observing him through the peephole, he decides to grab a knife and getting closer little by little. He, despite Zero's tension, cuts the boy's ropes, freeing him. After having cut the ropes, Inyo tells him that it would be nice to have a cup of coffee. But when he didn't get a response, he decided to leave, but not before looking at a photo in which Tabu was with a woman. Realizing that the boy had stopped to look at the photo, he orders him to leave, and he obeys Zero, who says he was very rude. While Inyo picks up some eye-shaped fruits and puts them in front of the drone lens, the girl gets scared. And even though she finds it quite disgusting, he tells her that it is sweet and delicious. However, she doesn't care about this, as it is quite disturbing. Again, in the cafeteria, Tabu looks at the photo and remembers his past, in which he served coffee to his customers while his daughter grew coffee. Again, in reality, a creature attacks Inyo and they are happy because the meat of that monster is of very good quality. So they plan to hunt it to eat. So, using his powers, Inyo tries to attack the beast. However, she avoids the blow and begins to run trying to escape. So, they begin to chase him until they reach a clearing in the forest. And when they finally manage to cut him off, a huge monster emerges from beneath the ground, eating the small creature and burying itself underground again. This surprises Zero and, once the danger has passed, the boy explains to his apprentice that it is a strange monster to see. It is even the first time that he himself has seen one. However, he knows that they live underground and come out once they are hungry. While they are talking, they arrive at an area full of tombs and, when they realize that it is a cemetery, they begin to investigate the area a little until they reach a grave which has recent, fresh flowers placed on it. However, as he approaches, Inyo receives a shot very close to the foot, which luckily misses him. It turns out to be Tabu, who reminds him that he ordered him to leave. A silence surrounded the environment, only cut off by the sound of the man's magazine preparing and firing another bullet which passed much closer to Inyo's head without hitting him as a warning method. After this, the man tells him one last time to leave. So Inyo simply obeys and continues walking through the trees until he disappears. Zero, angered again by the man's behavior, says that it is not okay to point a gun at a person, but he confesses that perhaps he was protecting something very precious. Back in the tomb, the man hears a powerful roar and without thinking twice he runs towards that direction, preparing his weapon. Until finally, when he comes out of the trees, 
He reaches a clear area where he observes through the peephole if there is any possible danger. Seconds later, the same monster we had seen before emerges from the ground with a great leap, which had a drill in its face. So Tabu, upon seeing him, recognizes him and remembers what happened the day he lost his beloved daughter. In this memory, the creature appeared in the village and began to cause destruction. So while the villagers fled, a girl began to cry and a man helped her. However, by doing this, he was almost devoured by the creature, which, if it had not been stopped by another man who was armed, would have eaten the first one. The gunman fired more shots at the creature, which now had its attention fixed on him. However, the bullets seemed to do nothing. Until suddenly, a powerful shot pierces one of the monster's eyes, and Tabu appears. He takes responsibility for killing the beast and asks his partner to run away. But the beast with a powerful blow knocks down a building by throwing huge logs of wood on top of it. In the present, the hunter notices that it is the same monster as last time because it is missing one of its eyes, so he tries to target the other. However, his eyesight begins to fail, causing him to miss the shot. This shot alerts Inyo. And as the creature approaches, Tabu points again in the direction of one of his eyes. However, he is hit hard and thrown against a stone. Seeing this, Zero tells Inyo that they should help the man. However, he answers that he is not someone who seems to want help and they simply limit themselves to observing. So at that moment, the man receives another blow from the creature while he remembers how once the danger was over he woke up under the trunks, seeing around him the destroyed village and the corpse of his companion. As he head towards the cafeteria, he had the unpleasant surprise of seeing his daughter already deceased, which deeply saddened the man. Seeing his daughter's medallion gives him enough strength to get up once again and continue facing the beast. And while they were slowly approaching him, activating his drill, Inyo with his power managed to tie one of his feet, causing it to slip and Tabu manages to fire a shot into its mouth, which passes through the monster's skull, killing it instantly. Back in the cafeteria, Inyo appears with the intention of making him a coffee. However, seeing that it seems impossible, he simply deigns to return his daughter's necklace, which he lost during the fight. So seeing that Inyo is someone with a good heart, Tabu decides to buy him a cup, which makes Zero very happy. Days later, when she enters Inyo's office, she sees that there is a woman on top of him feeding him. When she asks who the boy is, he answers that his new secretary. The woman asks him who the little girl is, to which he answers that she is like a pet which greatly surprises Zero, especially when she saw that when he got pudding on it, she cleaned it off using her tongue. This made Zero very nervous and even embarrassed, until she suddenly wakes up, realizing that it had all been a nightmare. Jealous of having thought about how happy her teacher looked, she thinks that she should find some way to get closer to him and finally become an adult. So while he was sleeping, she ran away to a clothing store where she saw an adult costume that she really liked. However, it is very expensive. At that moment, Emilia appears, surprising the little girl. Filter stopped. The woman asks her why she is not with Inyo, to which she responds that today is something private. After hearing this, she notices that Zero was looking at the suit, so he asks her if she would like to try it on and, although at first she completely denies it, she finally agrees to try it on, although reluctantly. She puts on her clothes, however, due to her short stature, the suit is too big for her, which the saleswoman complains about, since it does not have smaller sizes. So little by little he tries on different outfits, in which none of them end up convincing him. Finally, as they leave the store, they have a conversation in which Zero says that she wants to appear more adult. At that moment, Daesim appears, who invites them to eat pudding, which makes the little girl very happy. So, after eating, they talk about the reason why they are both together, and explain that Zero wants to seem more adult. After hearing this, Daesim proposes a change of hairstyle by going to a stylist, where, after trying different hairstyles, none of them end up convincing him, until they dye her hair a dark color. When remembering the girl from her nightmare, she thinks that by having the same hairstyle she looks more adult with it. And although everyone agrees that she looks much more mature, Daesim says that the only problem there is is that Zero is very short. So they decide to go to Dendon's store to ask him if he has any medicine that increases height. He says yes, but there is a problem, to which Daesim comments that if it's about money, it doesn't matter how much it's worth, she will pay for it. But the seller explains that it has nothing to do with money, but that it is in Magmal since there is a tree there that bears fruit from growth. And after showing them the fruit in one of the books, he comments that he doesn't know if it really exists, to which Amelia proposes to go check it out, which surprises Dendon, since they ask him to guide them. So, under a small threat, he finally agrees, but asks how they plan to go, to which the millionaire says that he will take care of it himself, 
taking them to a huge pool from which a huge helicopter emerges. However, before riding, Emilia asks Zero if it will really be okay for them to go to the new continent without informing Inyo. And this one, after weighing it a little, says yes. Already in Magmal, Dendin is quite worried about the dangers that may be encountered, but Daesim asks them if they are hungry. And in a few seconds some butlers set up an elegant table, accompanied by candles and wine. She finishes the meal, and a small creature that looks like a lion cub with wings slowly approaches. This scares Dendin, who grabs one of his weapons and points it at the creature, intending to take revenge for the humiliation he had with the turtle. Since then, he has been training, and it is time to show the results. So, after thinking that if he defeated the beast, Amelia will congratulate him and gain his attention. But others are very doubtful about whether they fired or not. Zero approaches, giving him a carrot and a little more food, and tells him that he is a vegetarian animal, which greatly surprises the seller. Continuing with their journey and seeing many creatures, they finally arrive at the place of the first fruit. Even though Dendon found the journey a little complicated, and once under the tree, Zero asks the woman to lift her up. However, he misses it by a few centimeters. So after continuing to try, they finally grab it, but they lose their stability and fall on the cellar. To prove that the results are positive and the fruit is not poisonous, Zero forces Dendin to try it first. At first, it seems like nothing has happened. However, when he stands up, he notices that his legs are enormously long. Seeing that, despite the increase in size, this fruit was not the right one. In the next one, which was in a swamp, Dendin approaches it and, accidentally, slips, falling and accidentally eating it. The side effect was that his head stretched out a lot, so they decided to try another one, which looked like a mushroom. Together they get the seller to become the group's guinea pig again by trying the latter, which enlarged his entire body, making it gigantic. And once it returned to normal, they began to notice how the ground shook with the footsteps of a huge creature, which was a giant snail, which did not even react to the machine gun shots of the butlers, which he knocked down with his tentacles. Everyone begins to prepare to fight him, until Dendon shoots him with a crossbow, and the arrow breaks, teaching us that the monster was really tough. Zero, with his drone, tries to distract him, but the giant snail releases a kind of spores, from which plants grow that create a cage around them, leaving them trapped and very vulnerable. At the moment when it seemed that the snail was going to devour them, Inyo appears, hitting it and sending it into the air. However, the snail attacks again, so he asks them to get out of there, while he takes care of the monster. So while they both fight, the rest look for a way to get out of their plant cage and say that the only option is to take the growing fruits again. Dendin refuses, however, they force him. Inyo, due to how resistant the monster was, could not defeat it. But in the distance, the cellar became giant, destroying the plants and eating another of the fruits, which made the legs grow. He gives a powerful kick to the snail, even though it loses its balance and falls. But to top it all off, they make it eat the last of the fruits, which stretched its head. And with a headbutt, they turn the snail over, something that Inyo takes advantage of to give him a powerful blow to his weak point, thus ending the fight. Back at home, Emilia, Daesim and Dendon say goodbye, while Zero apologizes to her master for having gone to Magmal without telling him, explaining that it was because he wanted to find something that appeared in a book that the seller had. To which Inyo tells her that he gave it to her and, of course, it is false. Even though Zero was going to tell him that what he wrote in the book really happened, he simply tells him to take it with her next time, to which he is accepting, while thinking that they had a lot of fun during the trip. Days later, Inyo is facing off against a species of dinosaur, and after creating a sword with his powers, he finishes him off. Later, a couple thanks him for having completed his assignment and he says goodbye to be congratulated by Zero for his good performance, since they needed a good payment because there was only ketchup left in the refrigerator. After that, Inyo says that they will have steak for dinner that night, but his apprentice tells him that it is not good to get carried away like that. So in the end they end up deciding that they will have croquettes for dinner, since they are good and cheap. The conversation is interrupted by a laugh in the background that surprises Inyo who, when he goes to investigate, a man is found playing with a two-headed snake, which is surrounding the man and tickling him. Inyo, somewhat confused, asks him what he is doing, to which he explains that he studies the ecology of living beings in the area, since Magmal is a place where new and unknown creatures are found every day. And after reporting that the snake is not dangerous or aggressive, it leaves. That's when the man introduces himself as Roberto and just before shaking his hand he is surprised by a steel dragonfly, which explains that if predators try to eat them, they hurt their mouths due to the hardness of their body, which is as hard as diamond. 
to then see a land fish, which explains that it evolved to be able to walk by developing lungs. While in Yo and the surprised man talk about the fact that the boy, despite being somewhat strange, it is clear that he is devoted to animals. At that moment, Roberto asks Inyo to follow him, since he is going to show him his favorite place. When he get there, it turns out to be a giant tree with nests hanging from it, and in one of these are three chicks of a very unusual bird. So the man comes over and feeds them. At that moment, a creature similar to a dinosaur with a flower head catches Roberto's attention, and he heads towards the animal, not knowing what it is. However, Zero quickly reacts by stopping him when this monster releases a kind of gas. While Inyo creates an arrow to make the animal retreat, a ball that seems to attract its attention as it chases it, and a fan to clear the gas. And when he asks Roberto if he is okay, he is more worried about the chicks. On the other hand, not far from there, two men named DJ Z and Baby Fat, who carries a camera, they record a video saying that today's plan is to play darts, showing a species of rodent tied to a tree with a target on its chest, which, among themselves, after some arguing that it's not very exciting to watch because the animal doesn't look very scary, DJ Z throws a dart, thus killing the poor animal. On the other hand, Inyo explains to Roberto what happens when you inhale the smoke emitted by the monster they had just avoided, which creates a hallucination, to which the man asks what he threw at him to get the creature's attention. Inyo answers that they were poppy seeds, since it is one of his favorite foods. After that, they continue to explain that if you breathe the gas, you will have hallucinations about things that you no longer want to see in very deep fears. He tells them that lately he is not having a good time, since he is seeing how the animals in the area are dying crucified, with a mouth full of stones and even chopped into pieces. Once the video is finished, DJ Z and Baby Fat are not very satisfied with the result, because the victims of his games die too quickly. At that moment, some birds catch their attention, so they chase them until they reach the tree where the nests are. So DJ Z comes up with the idea of recording a video in which they set fire to the tree since that would surely give them many visits. And after pouring oil into the nests, he sets them on fire. In the distance, Roberto and Inyo see the large column of smoke, so they run there. While the two YouTubers film how the tree burns, minutes later, when they finally arrive, the tree is already completely burned and this greatly disturbs Roberto when he sees that his beloved chicks have been burned to death. And he remembers when he first found them, when their nest had fallen, tying it back to the tree so they could survive. At that moment, Inyo informs the man that the fire was arson, since if the tree burned so quickly, it couldn't have been due to natural causes. Almost after that, he sends Zero to inspect the area while the man laments. While DJ Z and Baby Fat talk about how dangerous but exciting that was and how good the recording will be. After making a small grave for them, Roberto continues lamenting and Zero finds the channel of the two arsonists and then finds them nearby. When Inyo informs about this, he asks him what he will do, so, victim of rage, he takes out a knife from his backpack and decides to go after them. When they finally meet and ask their reasons, they try to evade the topic of conversation a little. However, Roberto continues saying that they were discovered and that they were the ones who killed the poor birds, and DJ Z says there are no animals in Magmal only monsters, to which Roberto explains to them that those chicks lost their mother and it is very difficult for them to survive in an environment like this, since they have many enemies. However, the YouTuber continues to justify himself by telling him that he is another enemy, so what happened was inevitable, to then try to make the man feel horrible by asking him if he eats meat, since it would be hypocritical for him to defend some animals while eating others, thus making him more and more angry while telling them that they shouldn't take lives for silly games, to which DJ Z continues to repeat in a mocking tone. Little by little, this argument makes Roberto feel bad, until the YouTuber continues saying that there is no problem if he kills one or two birds. And after seeing that there was an oil lizard next to him, he also decides to set it on fire with his lighter, since he thinks it will surely burn well. After that, the man pounces on DJ Z, while he begins to hit him and ask him to apologize to everyone. He is really scared, he asks his partner for help, but at that moment, Roberto takes out his knife and demands that he apologize again. The tension increases every time, until it is suddenly cut off when Inyo shows them the intact lizard, which explains that they do not burn. And then he scares Baby Fat by saying that now that they've cooked him, he should eat him, to which he runs away in terror. Now that the YouTuber was left alone, Roberto demands that he apologize again for the last time as he prepares to stab him, but is just stopped by Inyo, who tells him that it is not necessary for him to become the same kind of person as them. In addition, they must flee from there, since monsters are approaching. 
After saying this, the Jay-Z is tied to a rock and Inyo tells Roberto that it is the same plant monster from before, and even though the YouTuber demands that they let him go, they simply leave after saying goodbye. While the drone brings a poppy seed near it, once the creature gets closer, DJZ laughs at the monster being so small. However, this when its spray makes him see his greatest fears. While in the distance, Roberto and Inyo observe him and when the man asks what the boy is seeing, simply answer that we all have things that scare us very much. Back in the city, Zero tells them that he has uploaded the video humiliating DJZ and Baby Fat to their channel and it has become really famous, so out of shame, they will not go out in public again, much less do things like this. Roberto tells him that at that moment he thought it was okay to kill, but thanks to him he realized that it is not okay to speak so conceitedly about life, and he thanks them for their help. And after this, they leave. While Inyo talks with his apprentice in the helicopter, he tells him that today they will have steak for dinner. To what is behind he tells him that he shouldn't get so excited. He replies that it was a joke and that croquettes will be fine. The next night, Zero is in bed having a nightmare in which, when he woke up, she was tied by hands and legs by shackles, and little by little, from a long corridor, footsteps could be heard approaching the cell where she was, revealing the face of an older man through the bars, which scared the girl a lot. He asked disconsolately to stop under the gaze of a red-haired boy of more or less the same age. The old man took out a remote control with which, by pressing its button, he electrocuted her. After this, she finally woke up for real in her bed but equally scared, since she couldn't get the old man's macabre smile out of her head. When he suddenly hears the sound of a knock and goes to investigate in Yo's room, he sees that he has simply fallen out of bed but is still sleeping. This calms her down as she remembers how she touched her head, and after that she goes back to sleep. In the morning she realizes that her teacher has woken up even before her, which is usually really strange, and he thinks he is approaching the end of the world. After a short conversation, he tells her that he has to go run some errands and will leave her alone all day, to which she asks him if he wants her to make him breakfast, but because the boy was in a hurry, he says no, and this worries Zero even more. After Inyo leaves, he sees that there is a strange mark on the calendar, so he decides to meet his friends, because she feels somewhat upset since Inyo never told her where he was going. They don't see anything strange about him getting up early and leaving without breakfast. However, Zero explains to them that it is actually something very unusual, so something must be going on, since she doesn't get up early no matter how many tricks she try. After discussing what reasons could lead a man to act so hastily, Zero remembers that he had something written on the calendar. Chester says that it may be something related to Shuin, to which Amelia asks if she ever met him, but she answers no, since when she met Inyo he was no longer there. When asked how he met the boy, she becomes sad and remembers the old man's face ordering her to catch Inyo, and threatening to electrocute her if she disobeys him. So, grabbing him by the neck, he begins to squeeze with no response from the boy, more than stroking her head and telling her that everything will be fine now, since a certain someone asked her to find and protect her. Everyone was waiting for a response from Zero, however, she simply said that she picked it up, which surprises everyone at the table. What they did not know is that from the bar they were being spied on by a hooded man, who was transmitting the images to the old man, whose name was Burton. At that moment, a gunshot catches everyone's attention and it turns out to be the bartender, who is none other than Taboo. He asks them to remain silent or leave. Meanwhile, from his secret base, Burton begins to mobilize more of his hooded henchmen. On the other hand, in Magmal, Inyo arrives at the large wooden house on the tree in which he lived with Shuin. She begins to clean it all, sweeping and scrubbing every corner of it, until finally, when he stops to rest, he remembers the farewell he had with his teacher. When she asked him if they would see each other again, he replied that probably not, but despite that, he must keep the promise to protect Zero forever. So the boy went to a gigantic base in the middle of the sea where the little girl was held. After separating from his friends and returning home, Zero happily goes to greet Inyo in his office, but she is traumatized when she realizes who is sitting at her teacher's table, who was saying goodbye to the house and beginning his way back. Suddenly, a traumatizing memory passes through the girl's head, and she remembers the torture and tests she suffered as a child while the man greeted her as Zero Five. And before she can use her powers, she is attacked by one of the old man's hooded henchmen. Despite this, she angrily tells him that this place is the teacher's chair, and we can see how the rest of the henchmen divide in the middle of the market towards different directions. Burton reminds him that he is his real master and points out the device with which he shocked him, telling him that it is a new model and asking him if he wants to try it. 
to which she responds that it is no longer an experiment, and the old man asks her if she will be able to say the same after seeing something. That's when Denden is seen on a large screen next to one of the hooded men. Zero asks him what he plans to do and Burton tells him that everything will depend on his answer. While the seller thinks that another weirdo has arrived at his store and seeing that he does not answer his questions, he is about to kick him out. After a small conversation with the little girl, not getting a response from her, he tells him that time is up and shows him what will happen if he doesn't obey, blowing up his henchmen inside the store, thus killing Denden. And after that, asking again who his true master is. But seeing the young woman in shock, he decides to encourage her again, showing him the rest of his friends, who one after another are approached by the rest of the henchmen and asking for the last time who his master is. Under threat of eliminating the rest of her loved ones, she responds that he is her only master. All this happens while Inyo is arriving in the city with his helicopter. When he arrived at his base, a video was waiting for him in which the old man was. This makes him remember how he saved her once when the old man wanted her to face one of the most dangerous beasts on the new continent to awaken her powers. However, once the girl was going to attack the creature, Inyo came out of her hair, accidentally receiving the blow. The old man apologized for having dirty the room and taking the girl. As revenge, he teaches her how her friends are in danger. The memory of when he rescued her continues at the point where Burton orders Zero to catch the boy, threatening to electrocute her. But with his powers he manages to destroy the controller after snatching it from the man's hands and hitting the man hard leaving a large scar on his face. On the cameras you can see how each and every one of his friends is killed when his subordinates blow them up, something that disturbs Inyo, while Burton says that everything has just begun, showing him that his apprentice also has an explosive necklace and tells him that he will be waiting for him, since since he stole everything, now the tables have turned. He warns him that they may not even want to meet again. This makes Inyo react. When he turns around he realizes that he has a hooded man behind him with an explosive insect on his head that ends up exploding a few centimeters away from him. And after this, Burton leaves the area in a van, laughing when he sees his plan fulfilled. Back at Burton's base, he remembers how Inyo destroyed his facilities and left that mark on his face. Now that his experiment was back in his cell, he began to remember all the tests he subjected the little girl to with the intentions of activating his lactor powers, making the decision to use pain and despair as a trigger now that the little girl was out of energy, to then activate her device and give her a huge shock. Back in the present, a devastated Zero just wanted to be with her master again and was beginning to worry if he was okay, praying and trying to make herself believe that she was still alive and would come to save her. After that, they serve him food through a small crack in the wall. So she, curious, decides to look out to see what's on the other side, seeing more boys around her age locked behind bars. That's when she recognizes Roku, a boy she saw there earlier and who is a little angry with her, since he says she always gets special treatment. When she asks him if he is also a lactor, he answers that he was once but not anymore. And after Inyo attack, they managed to escape, but they were captured again, since they were found because they lived on the street. So, as punishment, they took away their power, and that no one can save them, neither him nor her. But Zero answers that her teacher will come to rescue her, which makes the boy laugh. A few seconds later, some hooded men come to take him away. The old man, who was in his office, watches through the cameras how Inyo managed to escape the attack and thinks that everything that lies ahead will be fun. There we are shown how Inyo was able to save himself by creating a large shield in front of him and, despite coming out somewhat bruised, he managed to escape from the building with the helicopter and was now on his way to rescue his precious friend. After this, Roku is taken to Burton, who thanks him for the wonderful gift they gave him, referring to his powers. And now that they are no longer of any use, he wants them to do him one last favor. That's when a large glass plate separates the two and insects come out of devices that end up landing on the young people's heads, clinging with their sting. The screams of pain scare Zero, who was listening from his prison. At night, Inyo arrives at Burton's maritime base, who realizes his presence when alerted by the cameras and contacts Zero, showing him how her master died. After watching this video, the last hopes that the little girl had disappear, while the old man waits for the arrival of Inyo. Zero cries uncontrollably remembering each and every moment he spent with his master since he rescued her, on the missions, the assignments, and think about everything she learned and enjoyed with him. Once at the base, Inyo infiltrates in stealth until some huge pipes begin to fall on him, but luckily he avoids them, until he reached a room where some hooded men were waiting for him. At that moment, a screen descends from the ceiling on which a live video of Burton is projected, explaining to him that his subordinates have the same mechanism as before. 
and when Inyo asks him why he decided to do it all now, the old man answers that he needed time to prepare because of him since he destroyed a lot the last time they saw each other. They both continue talking until the old man tells him that he is much stronger now. However, Inyo doesn't seem to care about this, and he asks her where her friend is, to which Burton replies that it's in the next room. However, he doesn't need to know something like that, but Inyo keeps asking him again and again until he wears out the man's patience, who orders his subjects to put an end to him. One after another he pounces with the intention of catching him, however, due to his skills, he avoids them all, until the old man blows up one of his henchmen. But Inyo manages to avoid the explosion by hiding behind a column, and Burton, realizing this, has them surround him and explodes three of his lackeys. But he is badly surprised when he realizes that he managed to avoid the blow by covering himself with one of the hands created with his power. However, he had been trapped under a piece of pillar, leaving only one of the henchmen alive, which was Roku. Inyo, giving a quick cut with his sword, manages to remove the necklace, thinking that this would stop the explosion. However, Burton answers that that was not the way to avoid it, thus lighting up the bug in his head, ending with a large explosion that makes Inyo hit one of the pillars. That's when the old man enters the room and sees that Inyo is injured. However, he only repeats the question of where his friend is, and after getting up, he creates a sword with his power and goes towards the old man, which suddenly pierces the boy's leg with another sword, revealing that he now also has the power of a lactor. And now that he has this power, he is much stronger. After this, we are shown how he got his powers by transferring them from Roku, to then kill his subject. He also tells Inyo that even collecting 58 lactors was not enough. So, since he's so strong, that makes him the perfect opponent to test his new power. So, after having a small conversation in which they challenge each other to see who is stronger, Inyo stands up and creates a grenade in his hand. However, Burton stops him, reminding him that he has the command that could activate his friend's explosive and reminding him that the one he had cut before is very close, and for a rookie like him an advantage is necessary to make it fair. He turns on the button, exploding the necklace from the ground. The explosion scares Zero, who is still in her cell. While the old man tells Inyo that he is taking it really seriously, he continues hitting the young man and after observing his sword he thinks that if he used it he would end it too quickly, and what he really wants is to enjoy it. So he transforms his sword into a spiked bat and begins to approach Inyo. He hits him, but hitting the boy's tool belt, the blow misses. However, he repeats the movement, this time, giving it a powerful impact and one after another, he begins to sweep the floor with it. However, Inyo notices the door through which the old man had arrived. So taking advantage of one of his blows, he creates a grenade which is pushed by the bat until he reaches the viewpoint of Zero's cell, making it explode. And that's when Inyo lets his apprentice know that he's still alive, which makes her really happy. This enraged the old man, who hits Inyo again and threatens to blow up the device, but the boy tells him that if he pressures him, his revenge will not be complete, since his only goal is to get revenge on him. After this, he asks his apprentice to try to remember. So, again transforming his bat into a sword, Burton takes the opportunity to cut him in the back. This makes Zero remember when she was saved and how now Inyo would be her new owner, however. He told her that he didn't like her calling him that and that he would prefer something like a teacher. They then introduce themselves to each other, but due to the girl's name, she simply changed it to Zero thus beginning her new free life. Burton, seeing that Inyo did nothing, told him that he would free his friend in exchange for him kneeling. Hearing this, the girl from the other room remembered how she knelt before the old man to beg for mercy, so because of the helplessness of not being able to do anything and seeing his master forced to do that, and after remembering how he put himself in danger to save her, she activates her power, getting angry and freeing herself from the shackles and the device that trapped her to send the drone to attack thus stopping the blow that Burton was about to deliver. And after that, Inyo creates one of his giant hands with which he hits the old man, leaving him knocked out. And after being with her apprentice again, she apologizes for all the problems caused, and he reminds her that he promised to protect her. So he tells him that he should leave, since he is very hungry. However, from above the observer, the old man, standing again, says that he is not finished yet, by eating a kind of fruit, he greatly increases his power, but something in his body begins to fail and he falls from the observation deck to the floor of the cell, immediately transforming into a formless creature, which attacks them and an exchange of blows begins, which stops suddenly when Inyo cuts off his head. However, the creature begins to regenerate and the fight continues. So, while the boy dodges the attacks, he notices that there is an exit at the top of the roof where there is a huge fan and asks Zero to take him up to the roof with his drone, 
while she leaves the base, so Zero obeys as they begin to rise, pursued by the monster that begins to climb the walls without stopping attacking, and by a miracle they manage to cross the propellers without being cut, not like the monster that ends up destroying the roof, but despite this it does not stop, and now together they begin the last fight against the creature, which, creating a huge hammer, hits towards the boy, believing he had ended his life just to realize that it was on him that there were two giant hands, which crush him and the rest of the building against the ground, sinking under the sea. Already in a small boat a little away from the site of the explosion, they both reunite, happy to be safe, while Inyo thinks that he fulfilled the promise he made to Shuen. And when he turns to his apprentice, he sees that she is sad because of the death of her friends, but he teaches her that this is not the case, contacting them, where they explain that both Chester and Emilia survived due to the ship's defenses, while Dasim survived due to the armor of his limousine and Taboo had time to hide in the shelter of the store. But Dendon was simply lucky and survived despite being badly injured. Finally, Zero asks Inyo where he went the day before, to which he answers that he went to Shuin's house, since he goes there once a year to clean it to finally tell her that one day the secrets of the new continent will be revealed and that that day he wants her to be with him. Once home, they both remember how happy they are to have each other, 